You may have heard of trachaic tetrameter before. Maybe a teacher has mentioned it. Maybe a super clever student in your class has mentioned it, but you're not quite sure what it means. And the word just sounds way too intimidating to even begin to figure out what it means, let alone apply it either to poetry analysis or to analyzing a Shakespeare play. However, what I want to show you is when it comes to to create tetrameter, what it means and how to spot it in poetry and plays is actually fairly straightforward as long as you follow these really simple three steps okay now the reason why it's actually really important to know some of these advanced techniques is because one of the i would say poorly kept secrets of really high achieving english students is they tend to go the extra mile in learning slightly more rare techniques that either they haven't necessarily learned in school formally from the teachers or if the teachers have taught them what it means they have gone the extra mile to actually find this and apply it when they are doing analysis of any kind of poem or any form of literature okay however what I want to show you especially today and in this video is how easy it is to spot some of these techniques these fairly advanced techniques that actually fetch quite a lot of marks okay so when it comes to trachaic tetrameter it's just a fancy way of saying a sentence with eight syllables so you can clap eight times as you read through all of the syllables and the first syllable is stress so it takes just a little bit longer to pronounce the second syllable is unstressed and these this pairing so the first syllable being stressed slightly longer to pronounce the second syllable being stressed uh, being unstressed which means slightly shorter to pronounce these happen in a pair which is what we call a trochee okay so a stressed syllable and an unstressed syllable is a trochee this pair happens four times okay so there's four trochees stressed unstressed one stressed unstressed two stressed unstressed three stressed unstressed four okay so in total there are four stressed syllables in this line of poetry and four unstressed syllables also in the same line of poetry. And really these four trochees make up what we call a trochaic tetrameter. I will show you an example of this taken from Shakespeare's play Macbeth. And this is taken from act four, scene one, where the witches are basically looking at this cauldron, it's bubbling up and they're conjuring the uh, underworld, okay? So of course they're part of the supernatural world and they state, so the witches state, double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Now this is a perfect example of trachaic tetrameter because as you can see, I've underlined the first stress syllable in red and the second unstressed syllable in green. So as you can see here, double, double toil and trouble duh takes a little bit longer that's why it's what we call a stress syllable it takes just a little bit longer as a syllable to pronounce bull is a unstressed syllable because it takes just a little bit shorter to pronounce same goes for double again here then toil takes a little bit longer as a syllable to pronounce and takes a bit shorter and of course tr in trouble takes a little bit longer to pronounce whilst bull in trouble again takes just a little bit shorter and the same goes for fa ya uh, or rather fire burn and cauldron bubble okay so fire burn and cauldron bubble again here as you can see this one takes a little bit longer to pronounce this takes a little bit shorter to pronounce longer to pronounce shorter to pronounce longer to pronounce shorter to pronounce longer to pronounce shorter to pronounce okay so this is just one of several examples that you can spot in literature and especially in poetry of what we call trachaic tetrameter. So always just remember just to recap, trachaic tetrameter is just a fancy way of saying a sentence with eight syllables. The first is stressed, the second is unstressed, the third is stressed, fourth is unstressed, fifth is stressed, sixth is unstressed, seventh is stressed, eighth is unstressed. And of course there are four trochees. So the pairing of the stressed and unstressed syllable, this happens four times within this line. So that's really it when it comes to trachaic tetrameter. Always remember that if you can, try your best to go the extra mile when you're looking at poetry or even plays when you're analyzing them to see if there's any example of this. Of course, not all poets use this. Shakespeare, for example, even if he uses this in this line with the witches, he doesn't use it consistently throughout the play. However, he alters the rhythm and so does uh, a poet when they're writing. And sometimes part of altering the rhythm is writing using these different types of rhythm within their writing. So that's it when it comes to trachaic tetrameter. Thanks so much for listening.